good morning. It's Pastor Johnson. I've got my cup of coffee. I hope you do as well. We're preparing to go into our uh, prayer line in just a moment. And today we're going to talk about routines. Have you ever mindlessly went through a routine, maybe going to the grocery store, picking up the kids, coming home from work, and had to think, how in the world did I get from point A to B? Have you ever gone through a routine and just been weighed down by the fact that you have to go through it? I'm so grateful that some thoughtfulness can inspire some gratitude about the routines that we take for granted and how that gratitude can inspire hope in God and that hope in God can change our perspective about the day. Looking forward to sharing with you in just a few moments as we connect in our prayer line. Good morning, good morning. This is Pastor Johnson, and we're grateful to be with you all today. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and are glad in it. It's May 24, May 24, 2023, and it's really good to be with you today. I began my morning by listening to some Cali Day, Hear My Prayer, and uh, we'll post that. To social media a little bit later as a part of our devotions video but uh, it really blessed my heart just a simple song asking the lord to hear her prayer and we know that the lord uh, does hear our prayer and that's why we've gathered over these many years on this prayer line uh, because we believe in the power the power of prayer today's daily bread is a really good one and it's entitled Blessed Routines. I think we are all made up of our habits, our rituals, and our routines. If you want excellence in your life, then you have to have habits, rituals, and routines that will bring you to that excellence. Uh, and so um, today's Daily Bread is entitled Blessed Routines. And it is drawn from the wisdom of Ecclesiastes, uh, the second chapter, verses 25. It says, without God, who can eat or find enjoyment? Our memory verse for today, without God, who can eat or find enjoyment? Have you ever found yourself wanting something to eat and thinking about restaurants? And with each restaurant, you say to yourself, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. Or wanting uh, to be entertained and going through your options that are available to you and say, no, nah, I don't want that either. Uh, have you ever found yourself running errands and uh, those errands can include picking up the kids, uh, going to the grocery store, doing the things you need to do to move your family along. And it just seems like this routine is so fixed that you don't even have to think about where you're going. You just sort of days off, doze off, daydream off, and you're there wherever you're supposed to be. And you ask yourself, how did I get here? 
Um, and in a real sense, you're, you're in the midst of a routine. Well, for the last three years, a lot of those routines have been broken. And I can remember the first time going back to a restaurant uh, at, in the midst of the pandemic after we had been away from restaurants for about a year and remembering how good it felt to sit in a restaurant, sit in a room with other people and eat a meal uh, or to um, to be able to go and listen to live music with other other folks or uh, to be able to go for some of you back to the office. And those things seem to be sweeter because they had been kept from us. And so today's Daily Bread explores that uh, a little bit, and uh, I'm grateful for it. Uh, on yesterday, I had the occasion to go through routine again, and I was on my way to a courthouse um, in Twiggs County. And after that, I would I had needed to go up to Atlanta to the Supreme Court to a meeting. And, oh, I just didn't really feel uh, motivated in any regard. I went to court, got a good outcome, went on to Atlanta, got a good outcome. It was only after the meeting had concluded uh, that I uh, really appreciated and had a sense of gratitude for, for the routine. I had to remind myself that this routine was, was once my fervent prayer. God, if you, if you would bless me enough to be used for your kingdom, if you'd bless me enough, to be able to acquire the skills and talents to be an attorney or uh, to, to be of some use to helping others. That was my prayer. And my prayer had become a routine. And on yesterday, a good friend of mine reminded me of the need to sometimes sit and be thoughtful about where we are and to be grateful. And I am so glad for that conversation because that routine, uh, my, my trip home was so different than my trip going. I just blessed the Lord the entire way, um, got home, uh, got changed and laid down with a rest that I haven't had in some time. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm going to remind us all today. Regardless of what you got going on, regardless of how routine it has become, be thoughtful. We still have what measure, I'm going to say it like my grandmother would say it, our reasonable portion of health and strength. We still woke up this morning in our right minds. We still have an opportunity because the help of the Lord does come every day. Um, as, uh, as Connie would always say. We have an opportunity on this day uh, to get right those things we didn't have right on yesterday. We have an opportunity to continue to spread the gospel, uh, sometimes with words, but more, most importantly, with how we live, how we treat others, and how we demand to be treated ourselves. And so I want to put a pin there. Our memory verse for today is Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, verses 25. And uh, it, it's it's not a uh, one of those scriptures that stands out, but we should remember without God, who can eat or find enjoyment? Remember uh, to be grateful, uh, to be grateful. And that sense of gratitude will change your whole perspective about your day. Let's let's put a pin there and go to our prayer lines. Our prayer lines are um, are open and we sent out a reminder this morning about our prayer lines 1717908-1726. And of course, all of our devotions uh, will be stored on our church websites and uh, and can be replayed. Share this uh, when you are able to. It may bless somebody else. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. And it may be the very hope that people need um, in their own space and time. So let's go to our prayer line and see who's with us this morning as we prepare to go up uh, in prayer this morning. Good morning, people. Please pray for the Stroman family. The Nate Singleton, Jackie and Brian Williams, Angela and Cody Carl, Michael Michelle Seth, LaDonna Singleton, Tori Singleton, Egypt Singleton, Stephen Watson, Lorraine McDaniel, Lona Peterson, Mike Harris, our son Vivian, 
Erica Palmer, James Roberts, Betty Joe, all my sisters and brothers, all my grands, great grands, and great great grands, and everybody on the prayer line. And please do a special prayer for Angela. They only went to Florida this morning, so please pray a tribal mercy prayer for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful for you calling in every week from Philadelphia. And I thank God for you. We're certainly covering your prayer list. Thank you. Absolutely. Others this morning? Good morning. This Good morning. Is Amanda Nixon from Richmond Hill, Georgia. Praise God for whom my blessings flow. I want to thank God for his grace and his mercy. I want to um, pray for my normal prayer list to include my mother, Nita Tillman, my husband, Kenneth Nixon, my boys, Kenny and Malini. I um, also want to um, pray for my clients, um, Aaron Woods and Candace Clark, um, just for God to keep them calm during our process with um, them buying a home. Um, just want to um, thank and praise God for a life, health, and strength. Um, I want to pray. Praise and thank God for Miss Lou Elsa being on the line this morning, praying for her prayer list, praying for all the these family, um, praying for the unemployed, barely employed, people with addiction, that God break every chain in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And certainly praying for you this morning as well. Others this morning? Hey, Brother Samos, good to hear your voice. I know that uh, the Vivian may not be far from you. Praying for her as well. What's on What's on your heart this morning, brother? Just in general, just prayer in general. Pray for my my, uh, my family this morning uh, in its entirety. Uh, just prayer in general. In general, uh, pray for my uh, my cousin. Oh, yes. Pray for my business that the business continue to, to prosper. Uh, pray for my health and strength. Uh, that's it. Absolutely. Lifting you and the family. Uh, let me just pause and parenthetically ask you to cover those who are going through um, sickness and distress. And on Sunday, we uh, covered like we always do. Uh, the Hill family, particularly Ruth Hill. And we've gone to her bedside uh, in memorial and laid hands on her and asked for God's will to be done in her life, um, even as we ask it in, in all of our lives. Uh, but we know that um, that she is um, she's, uh, in critical shape and praying for her children, praying for her husband, John. Uh, you've been married for that long and been a partner with someone that long. It's a very difficult thing. And so um, just praying for them. There are others who are going through sickness and recovery um, in our in our faith community, in our church and across our community. Let's keep them lifted up as well. Uh, others this morning. Good morning. having all kinds of thoughts that I feel like a, a young person should constantly uh, burn it down and uh, embrace it in front of them. So I'm just asking God to heal her mind, uh, to recover my grandson, and to recover my family. Amen. Amen. And it's good to hear your voice. She's praying for a daughter who is um, dealing with depression. She says the devil is trying to play with her mind. And what we're going to pray for this morning is a peace. And then after, let's make sure that we connect and so we can get you a good mental health professional as well who may be able to help with the issues as well. We're going to pray for peace that surpasses understanding and deliverance and all of those things. And then make sure that we can connect with a good mental health resource in the area so that you can um, you can get the kind of practical help that she she. Uh, she may need and pray she has an open mind to receive that as well 
others this morning? You all better take care of Mother Sparrow in Atlanta. Don't go up there driving so fast now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'm just teasing you. Listen, yesterday you posted a beautiful picture of your mom and dad, um, Deacon Henry Sparrow, who I love so, and your mom who's still with us. And so if there was a word, consistency, and a picture beside it in the definition, uh, in the dictionary, excuse me, uh, your parents would be the definition of of that word consistency, and so I just thank God for them. Um, that picture also it was in their younger years, and they just looked so vibrant and so um, so full of life. Um, I looked at a couple of my pictures. Have you ever done this? Looked back at a couple of pictures and said, "Man, I look I looked okay. I looked all right." I don't know if I necessarily Amen. felt felt that back then, and again, that gives you a sense of gratitude. You're going to look back on these days with a sense of awe. Don't go through these moments bur so burdened down by whatever you think you're dealing with that you don't observe how golden, how really good, how really sweet this time is. And so, um, and somebody might say, but Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through right now. You don't know the pressures that I have on, on my shoulders right now. Well, you're right. I don't. But I do know that uh, there is a living God who knows all about it. And not only that, but the help of the Lord will come as you bear your burdens, as we each bear our burdens. And so um, even in the midst of great strain, great toil, those who are dealing with sickness and stress, taking care of loved ones, those who, who are trying to figure out what to do with their children this summer, trying to figure out how to keep things moving in the right direction to, to people in our community, you, you're going to, you're going to be just fine. I believe that. I believe that. Um, other prayer requests this morning. Pastor, stay still where you at because you're going in and out. Okay. All right, this is Octavia from Chicago, Illinois. I would like to pray for the Fuller family. Arnell, Delvin, Teresa, and Atavia. The Fuller Boys, Mason, Dentrell, Colby, Tavari, and Kyle. The Fuller Girls, all of the Fuller Boys, the Fuller Girls, Marlisha, Robbie, Kia, and um, Bianca, and all of the Fuller Girls. My um, auntie, Aunt Tilly, Aunt Peggy, Aunt Carolyn, Aunt Teresa, Aunt Shirley, Auntie Libby, and Auntie Pam, and my uncles, Uncle Willie. Uncle Joe and Uncle Sam, all of um, my cousins, and the Simmons Geiger room, everything that Sam said from those groups. Um, or like to pray for my job, Airmark, and all the um, higher up management, and all the custodial managers, and all of the custodial workers. I would like to pray for my church, not just in this year, about this church. And Reverend Ernest, my dad is third and first place in Toya. And um, my second church in Mount Moriah and Magnolia. And back to you, Reverend Johnson, first lady Nika, and the boys. Continue to pray for my strength. I've got some stuff going on for this. Keep me up in prayer covered. Cover, um, just cover, um, cover me in new beginnings. <laughs> 
And um, we coming through, Pastor. It's that time. Yes, it is what she you all know what she know you you know what she's talking about. It's Gemini season. It, Gemini, that's right, that's right. And yeah. the, the the May Gemini's, yeah. the May Gemini's are warming it up oh, for yeah. the for the June Gemini's. <laughs> and it's getting out the way for July. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God, God loves balance. God loves balance. I hear the Ju July is speaking up, August speaking up, but you know, God loves balance. He couldn't let everybody be born in June. And so, and, uh, you know, that just wouldn't be right. We are the lucky ones. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Amen. 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 But you know, the, the real blessing is, and regardless of what birthday this is for you um, and what this year has brought, to recognize the gift of life. I mean, that is one thing that when you get to a certain age, you realize just how blessed you are, especially when you hear, as Sister Sparrow said, someone passing in their forties, other people who are going through and, 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 you know, just, you just have to stop and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you Lord. Amen. Amen. Other prayer requests this morning. Let's cover, let's cover Chicago. All right. Absolutely. Got you in there. All right, go ahead. Your your dad was the epitome of a godly man. He he walked in a sense of humility, but don't get it twisted. He could get you straight if he needed to. Um, yes, he could. I I I try to, and and that's not my personality type, your dad's, but I really try as best I can to try to emulate some of the qualities that um that he had, even though that his personality type is not mine, but um. That's the kind of quiet man that I'd like to be. Um, that when I do speak, it carries the kind of weight that it that he had when he opened his mouth. And so um anyway, I, I really appreciate you posting that. Thank you. Amen. Others this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I thought I think Children who are connected with the church. I pray for our 
kids who are getting ready to start the summer, the end of school. I pray for those who are graduating and getting ready to start on new adventures um, that they can mentor along the way. I pray for those who are honor graduates and those who just barely made it out, that they have the love and the support um, that they need to continue on that journey. Mm. Jesus, amen. 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 We are grateful amen. for all of those who are graduating all over um, from a dear friend of mine whose daughter graduated from Harvard to uh, our sons and daughters across the ministry who are graduating and always a pleasure for Mika and I to get to as many graduations as possible um, and thanking God for these new beginnings uh, across uh, their spaces and time. Uh, just so many graduates all over and we're grateful for them. Other prayer requests this morning. Alabama, thanking God for life, health, and strength. Praying for my family. <clears throat> Carolyn, Teresa, Shirley, Pam, and myself. Praying for everybody on the prayer line. Praying for you, Pastor. Praying for my extended family. And it's Houston, Sam, George, all my friends in Alabama, my friends and family in other places. And I just want to thank God on um, Tuesday on Monday. I felt the next up Monday. I was doing my flowers as I normally do. I get up every Monday or Sunday. I go out to my yard and I'm walking around my flowers, pick the dead leaves off. I came back in the house and went back outside and was sitting on the porch. And I looked at my flowers to see what was going on. And something peeked his head out, and it was a big old snake. And I said, Lord, that's a snake. And I got scared because I ain't never killed no snake. I'm a Georgia peach and a Alabama girl now, but I ain't never killed no snake. <laughs> but I kept looking at it, and he kept coming and coming. And I jumped back and grabbed the shovel. I hit him one time. Then I hit him again in the shell before I said, oh, Lord, that amazing snake man, Jesus, please do this to kill this snake. I ran and got another chop object and hit him and hit him. And then I got close enough to take that thing and get on top of his head and just let it down. And that snake was moving and fighting and moving and fighting. And I said, I ain't never seen a snake this hard. So my mama killed the snake with a cocoa bar. And I'm like, why the snake won't die? And I just kept bamming and bamming. I said, Jesus, I've been praying. It was a snake right here somewhere. I don't know if that's the only one. But he revealed to me that snake. And it kept staying coming from the office, holding that snake and taking him and bamming it. The same chair and trying to kill him. And we couldn't get that snake there because we pulled him up out of the yard and throwed him out there on the rock. And he didn't get it. He kept taking it to the sky. And my sister, my daughter, Deetia, was praying for her, I thank God for her. And she said, she was talking to her brother and said, I was a poison snake. Then Shirley called me and said, her and Joe looked it up, and it was an Alabama diamondback rattlesnake. Oh, my God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. That's why I pray and I walk every day praying. I walk wow. every day praying every day. Well, so when, when you started telling the story, when you started telling the story, I immediately went into prayer for the snake. Because <laughs> I knew, I knew it was over for him. Uh, poor, poor, poor fellow, poor fellow. He, he, he just ran into the wrong person that day. <laughs> But you know, you know the there are there are poisonous snakes all around, and I'm grateful that worked out for you. But I've come to realize, as a country as a country boy myself, that the real snakes we have to worry about are walking on two legs. Yes, 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 indeed, yes, indeed. But anyway, I'm glad that worked out for you. We're praying for you now. You know that. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and praying for everybody. Absolutely. Others this morning. Good morning. Good morning. On the snake story, they found one in the counseling office at Liberty County High School, and it was poisonous also. How long had that? How long had that snake worked there? 
I have no idea, no, I'm just but teasing. I tell you, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, he might have been working the school because the, the council's office is in been closed. There's things all around the council's office before you can get to the council's office. You got to go through some other places to get there. Oh wow! But anyhow, thank you to praise God for another day. I want to oh, lift up uh, Rosalind Bacon, my friend, a friend of mine who lost her uh, twin brother transition over the weekend. I want to lift up Queen Esther High, who lost uh, her cousin um, in San Antonio, Texas. So the most good friends of mine. Pray that God will comfort them and keep them. Want to continue to lift up uh, the Herman Baker family. They lost the patriarch of their family. We'll lift up uh, Sophia Taylor, who's graduating today from Harvard. So, also want to uh, lift up the uh, Fraser Baker route. Uh, Sadie's already covered the Geiger Simmons route. I uh, just want to lift up New Beginnings. I uh, woke up this morning, heard from White Brotherhood, heard something about Shasta Lake, and so we shall see what that means in uh, my spiritual journey. But anyhow, just thanking and praising God for another day. And just uh, also pray for the political leaders of the United States that they will indeed look out for the citizens of the United States and not line their pocket or line with other countries. So we just ask that God cover all political leaders of the United States of America. Oh, yes, absolutely. Just praying for mankind every day. Everywhere that God will uh, bless everybody that's walking the face of the earth. Absolutely. Praying for your spiritual journey. Also praying for a sister of mine, uh, Allison Henderson Brooks. She's a daughter of Lawton Grove, and she will be installed this weekend at uh, Historic Hills uh, First Baptist in Athens as the first female senior pastor of uh, that uh, venerated congregation, which is one of the oldest um, African American congregations in Athens, Georgia. And so, I know it well. When I was in school there, I went to uh, Hills First Baptist. Uh, my membership church was Ebenezer, but I would sneak over to go to Hills First Baptist every ch every chance I could get. And it is really, really, really good that she is pastor. She's a dynamic leader. And um, we thank God for her and other um, women pastors who are taking their rightful place um, in God's house across the nation. So God bless her uh, on this weekend. And and all of you who are traveling this Memorial uh, Day weekend, we're praying for you, safe travels, as you get to a place where you can uh, get to some peace, get to some rest, get to some rejuvenation. That's all important to give us fuel for the journey. Let's pray. God, I'm so grateful this morning to be able to gather in your name and gather with those on this prayer line this morning. Thank you for each one of them who called in and those who gave their prayer request and for those who kept quiet and their prayer request lies on the altar of their hearts right now. Thank you for this daily bread, which encourages us to be more thoughtful, even in our routines, to think about the fact that we're so blessed and privileged to have these routines to be able to take our children here and there, to be able to run and do the groceries or to pay our bills. What a blessing it is to be able to do any of these things. We're grateful for this moment of focus where we can reflect on our gratitude. Lord, that encourages us to be even more grateful with the rest of this beautiful gift you've given us called today. It is our prayer on this day that our light would shine bright, bright enough for someone who we come in contact today to be able to see it and have a hope for themselves. Well, we pray that we would uh, be so courageous enough to share with those who are in their own darkness of the lessons we learned when we were in our darkness. Well, Lord, some of the best lessons I've learned about life came when I confronted myself in the darkness. Lord, help me to remember that darkness does not confound you. It does not make you fearful. We met you in the darkness of Genesis. Lord, I'm so grateful for that. And so Lord, on this day, for the prayer requests spoken and unspoken, for our families, for our businesses, for the journeys you've called us to lead this day, we are grateful. 
Now, Lord, bless and keep everyone on this prayer line is our sincere prayer. I am confident that there is no snake, that there is no devil, there is no problem, there is no circumstance, there is no situation that we cannot confront today because your help is with us. It comes every day and it is ours on this day. We give your name praise and glory. It is in Jesus' name that we are making this prayer. And the people of God would say, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. We love you so much. Do take care. We look forward to joining you soon.